Hello and welcome to part 4 of my video series Tactics in the Jababa London System You Should Know. Today I want to present you again one of my own games. The game took place in 2019 at a small tournament in Döbeln and my opponent was a young German player with a rating of roughly 1850 points. In the game you will see how I played against uh, Black's light square bishop and how I locked it down behind his own pawn chain. And I think that it is quite important for you to understand how to play against Black's light square bishop because positions as this will occur pretty often in your practical game. And in the end, a little tactic on the game for me, so this is why I included the video into this uh, video course. And you can see the critical position already on the board. It's right to move and win right on the spot, but take your time. Before we just jump right into the tactic, I of course want to show you how I reached the position and what was my thought process during the game. So without further ado, it's time to checkmate. <laughs> Started with the moves d4, d5, knight c3, knight f6, bishop f4, and here black decided to play the move e6. This is a logical move. Black's plan is to play the move c5 and attacking my center right away. And if I would grab the pawn on c5, well, then he can now take it back with a bishop, developing a piece. So this is an absolute understandable move, but it has some downsides as well. Because of the pawn on e6, the light square bishop is locked in behind his own pawn chain and it can no longer come to f5 or g4. And as you will see in the game, I was able to shut down the light square bishop the entire game and I believe that this was the reason why I won the game in the end. So let's proceed. In the game I played a move e3 and black played a sensible move, he played a move a6. What would have happened after c5, you already saw in my first video about the Jababa London system, but just in case you don't remember anymore or you didn't even saw the video, come on, if you didn't saw the video, you should start with video 1 and not with video 4 of the series, don't you? But anyway, the right move for white would have been knight to b5, threatening to jump into c7, saying check and winning the rook, so black has to play knight to a6, and here after c3, we can simply just stop, by its next moves will be a4, bishop d3, knight f3, knight e5, and castling short. While black finds it pretty hard to develop all his pieces. He cannot move his knight because then my knight will jump into c7, and if his rook will ever move, then the a7 pawn would be loose. So it's quite it's a quite pleasant position for white that I would advise you to check out yourself. Anyway, let's go back to the game. My opponent played a better move, he played a move a6. And here I kept on developing by playing my bishop to d3 and my opponent now finally attacks the center of the move c5. And this is a critical position. Whenever black plays the move c5 and your knight cannot jump to b5, then you really, really, really should think about taking the pawn. In 90% of the cases, it's the best move, probably even 99%. The reason is that now black threatens the move like c4. And if our bishop has to drop back, that's not good for us. Because then we will get a passive position with no counterplay and that's not what we want. So we are switching plans and we are taking the pawn. Black of course will take it back and now our plan is pretty simple. We will finish our developing by playing knight f3, castling and then we will start attacking the center of the move e4. So let's see how this works in practice. After the move knight f3, black responded with knight to c6, and after castlings, here the main move would have been castling by black. This move was played plenty of time and even on grandmaster level, and game could continue, for example, with e4, and after some exchanges, and queen f6, queen c1. I believe that white is just simply better. It's not a huge advantage, but it's a slightly advantage and the white position is absolutely preferable because 
Black Slide Squared Bishop is still locked in behind his own pawn chain, and it's not clear how to get it in the game. And White got some plans of playing, for example, c3, b4, a4, attack on the queen side, and even our bishops are pretty well lined up for supporting a queen side attack. So let's jump back to the game. In the game, my opponent decided to play the move bishop d6. And at the first glance, I thought, well, this cannot be dangerous. I mean, he just developed his bishop to c5 just to drop it back two moves later to d6. Is this sensible? Is this, is this really good move? But after thinking about the move for some minutes, I really came to the conclusion that this is quite a good move. Because Black's plan is to fight for the e5 square. If he would manage to push his pawn to e5, well, then he just simply can develop his light square bishop and he solved all his opening problems. So, yeah. In the game, I just simply took the bishop and after he recaptured, I stick with our plan and played the move e4. And here, my opponent made a slight mistake. He took the pawn on e4. I mean, this doesn't lose the game by any means, don't get me wrong. But after this move, I will reach a position that is similar to the one I just showed you earlier, where I think that the structure favors right. What he really should have done is a move b4. Now I have some options. I could retreat my knight to b1, to e2, or to a4. Um, just to show you one variation, I, let's say knight to a4. And here black finally manages to push his pawn to e5 and freeing up his light squared bishop. White's best move in this position would have been c4, with the plan of pushing on to c5 and placing the knight on b6, where it would be a pretty nice outpost. So black shouldn't allow this, and the best way for black to counter the c4 move is just simply by taking it. And after some more exchanges and developing moves, we reach a position that is, in my opinion, absolutely equal. Probably even slightly preferable for black, but I would say it's probably too much. I think it's just an equal position and yeah, this would have been a pretty good variation for my opponent. Okay, truth must be told, um, white could have tried other moves, for example in this position, instead of taking the pawn with the knight, you really got a shocking move knight to b5. And I analyzed this move a little bit in my leeches study. If you want to learn more about this variation, I would advise you to check out my leeches study. I will put the link down below in the video description. And yeah, on Leech in my leeches study, I just analyzed the move a little bit in more in detail. So just go there and check it out. And if you're willing to do some homework, well, then you could experiment with other moves like the knight b1 or knight to e2 move. So just let me know what do you think about this variation. Anyway, in the game, my opponent played the move d takes e4, and now we reach the typical structure for this variation after knight takes e4, and knight takes e4, and bishop takes e4. And here, my opponent decided to trade queens. And now let's stop and think about the position. I think that white must be better, because the rook already is on the open d file. The black's king isn't castled, the black's bishop still locked in behind his own pawn chain, and yeah, even the rooks aren't in the game. While on the other hand, my bishop is already threatened to take on c6 and ruin black's pawn structure, probably even the rook could jump into d6, and after the second rook appears on the d file, well, there's pretty much pressure on the black's uh, position. So, yeah. Let's see how I converted this position to the full point. Black played a move, bishop to d7. It's a logical move because if I would grab the knight now, then he could um, grab it back with the bishop and starting freeing up his position. So that's really not what I wanted. And so I decided to jump in with my rook. I just want to mention that in the game, I thought about another move as well. And the move is knight to g5. And the idea behind this move comes clear after a black move, let's say h6. In this position, white already got the tactical shot that wins the game right on the spot. 
And I would advise you to pause the video to try to figure out what White's best move is in this position. I'll give you three seconds to pause the video if you need to. One, two, three. Well, I hope you all found the solution. If not, I'll give you a little hint. Black's king already has to guard the bishop on d7 and the pawn on f7, so he's kind of overloaded. And try, try to find a way to um, expose this uh, overloadness of the black's king. I'll give you three seconds again to pause the video if you need to. One, two, three. Well, I hope you all found the solution. The best move for white is knight takes f7. Now, after king takes f7, rook takes d7, we are the pawn winning a second at any time. And yeah, I think this position is, a, is just great for white and absolutely winning. So let's go back. In this position, black has a better try and namely the move is knight to d8, protecting the f7 square so the sacrifice on f7 doesn't work anymore. And here I thought, okay, well, let's go in with the rook, but then he can play the move h6, and after rook d1, threatening to take the bishop on d7, he simply can just play bishop to c6, and after the exchange of bishops and the retreat of the knight, well, we can stop the analyze at this point and try to make a conclusion. Probably white's still a little bit better because he still got um, a d file, but to be totally honest, I didn't like the variation, because if you think about it, then we just swept our good bishop against black's bad bishop, and I don't see any reason why we should have done this. So this was the reason why I didn't play knight to g5, but instead played the move rook to d6. My plan is now quite simple. I want to bring the second rook to the d file, and then I want to push the c pawn to c5 to fix black's pawn structure on the, king, on the queen side, and then I could uh, start thinking about a move like bishop to d4, attacking the knight on c6 and putting even more pressure on the black's position. And now you can see how this worked in practice. Black um, played king to e7, attacking my rook, so I got it with the move rook to d1. And after rook a, d8, c4, bishop e8, c5, and f6, I reached the position I hoped for. Uh, with Black's last move, he tries to finally develop his bishop to h5 so that you can see some daylight as well. But it's already too late and the move knight to e4 is probably already winning. Black's best move in this position would have been probably knight takes d4. But even here, after rook takes d4, bishop c6, rook takes rook, rook takes rook, rook takes rook, and king takes rook, I simply just win a pawn and I will stop my analysis at this point. I analyzed this position a little bit more in detail in my leeches study, so if you're interested in this endgame, just check it out. But I think that with being a pawn up, um, um, it's only white who can win the game in this position, right? Anyway, in this position, my opponent decided to take the rook on d6, and now I just simply can grab it with the pawn. And he's not allowed to take it back with the king because then the simple knight to c6 will win the game because of the check and the knight is guarded so he cannot take it back with the king. So instead he went king to d7 and at this point I would advise you to pause the video and try to find a good move for white that wins the game right at the spot. I'll give you three seconds to pause the video if you need to. One, two, three. Well, I hope you all found the solution. If not, I will give you a little hint. As you can see, the bishop and the rook are already marked as red, and this is because they are not participating in the game at any means. And with this both pieces stuck on the king's side behind their own pawns, it's probably a good decision to start a queen side attack and winning the game. So I would advise you again to stop the video and try to think about the solution if you need to, so I'll give you three seconds to do so. One, two, three. Well, I hope you all found the solution. The right move is bishop takes c6. And black has to take it back with the pawn. And now the can move knight to b3 just simply wins the game. The threat is knight to c5 check and winning the pawn. Let's say, for example, 
King C8 doesn't help because of Knight C5 and now it's a fork between both pawns so one pawn will fall and yeah this position is just simply one. In the game my opponent decided to play the move Bishop F7 but after check King D8 and the perpetual of moves because I was already low in time I just grabbed the pawn and I will stop my analyze at this point because this position is clearly won. If you are interested in the rest of the game and you want to know how I um, converted my advantage then just simply check out my leech study you will find the game there um, the next move will be knight to c5 rook to d3 rook to a3 and then i attack the black king from the side and the only way to survive this attack is probably by giving up his, uh, the exchange by black and then i still have the a2 pawn left on the board and the d6 pawn left on the board that will of course win the game easily for me so as already told you, if you're interested in the rest of the game, just check out the leech study. So, let's conclude what we've learned today. Well, in positions where black plays the move c5, and we're not able to place our knight to b5, we really should think about taking the pawn on c5. I would say in 90 up to 99% of the cases, this is the best move for you. And after taking the pawn c5, you should simply just finish your development by playing knight f3 and castling, and then you're ready to attack black center with e4. Just keep in mind that whenever black will take the pawn on e4, you will just get a pretty pleasant position where, because of the bad bishop on c8. So I hope this video was helpful for you and you learned something. If you did, please let me know in the comments and don't forget to hit the like and the subscribe button. So see you next time and it's again time to checkmate.